Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Fred and today I'm going to talk to you about a very important subject, magic. This video is going to be in two parts. In the first one, I'm going to try to introduce you to my very important subject. In the second part of the video, I'm going to try to give you my personal esoteric analysis of the Harry Potter saga. So, for those of you who are only interested in the second part of the video, I put you the link down below. For the rest of you, let's get to it. As I say, my name is Fred. I'm 24 years old, I live in Lyon, France, I'm French of course, I've decided to make this video in English also, so that maximum amount of people can reach the kind of information I'm going to try to share with you, but as you can probably already hear or not, English is not my first language at all, so I'm going to try to do my best here, okay, but please be gentle. Uh, I hope you will have as much fun as I did, let's get to it. Uh, I've been studying law in a very reputated college called Jean Moulin and uh, during my third year of studies my childhood best friend started to talk to me about 9-11. Little by little I started questioning everything and uh, soon realized that what I was learning in college wasn't always true. So after I've got my graduation, I've started to make my own research and after years and years of esoterical and occult and magical uh, studies I finally discovered that magic was real, but okay, here's the thing, you don't have to believe in me, you don't have to believe in whatever I'm going to try to share with you. I came from a very logical, pragmatical, or if we can say it this way, scientific background, and yet here I am today. I did not believe in God, in spirits, in magic, in fairy tales, or anything like that. And the thing is, there is a way, there is a bridge between materialism or a scientific way of approaching things and the spiritual world. And this way, this bridge is what I'm going to try to share with you. So in my six future videos, we're going to see what is truth, what is God, sacred mathematics, magic of course, secret societies and their symbols, the secret of the pyramids and other sacred places, astrology, astrotheology, theology, which is for me the most beautiful science I have ever discovered, the divine nature of human being, the matrix, and for those of you who are already pretty familiar with this kind of subject, this is going to be the most interesting parts, and I hope for the others too. Extrasensory perception, out of body experience, or as it is called in the spiritual world, uh, mental or astral projection. So, as you can see, we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to start right now. I'm going to give you my personal esoteric analysis of the Harry Potter saga. Uh, as you can imagine, this is not going to be like my future videos in a scientific and logical way of, of approaching things because uh, this is really personal, my point of view on this subject, but you'll see we're going to have fun anyway. So. Let's get to it. The wand. Take your wand, Harry! Sorry about the accent. <laughs> One of the most well-known items of magic throughout centuries, according to French occultist Eliphas Levy, the length of the magical wand should not exceed the length of the arm of the operator. In my own opinion, the wand acts like an antenna of sort, amplifying and materializing the will of the magician. Like any instrument, it can be manufactured in all kinds of ways, however, certain symbols should be inscribed upon it, which will determine which powers the magician will be related to. During magical ceremonies, the wand can symbolize the element of fire, so as the pentacle can symbolize earth, the chalice water, and the sword air. The basilisk. 
It is by chance that I heard of this mystical creature in the book of the famous theosophist Madame Blavatsky, a reference at the end of the page mentioned the name of the specialist on that matter, a person named Pliny. He wrote a book concerning ancient knowledge, including medicine, and he talks about basilisk this way. Anyone who sees the eyes of a basilisk serpent dies immediately. And like other snakes which flee its ears, it moves forward with its middle raised high, its touch and even its breath score grass, kill butches and burst rocks. Even the famous philosopher Aristotle said, according to Mr. Salg, if Basilisk can give you death, we can give him back by showing him the polished surface of a mirror, which will be the reason why Alexander the Great his disciple made himself a Polish surfer's shield before he undertook his trip to India. Elves Well known in fables and stories for children, these beings are part of the family of spirits of nature or elemental spirits. Some African religions talk about them, in Islam they are known under the name of jinns, shamans are famous for being able to contact them, Here's how the great occultist and theosophist Madame Elena Blavatsky describes these beings. The creatures evolve in the four kingdoms of earth, air, fire and water and called by the Kabbalists gnomes, sylphs, salamanders and undines. They may be termed the forces of nature. Under the general designation of fairies and fays, the spirits of the elements appear in the myth fable, tradition or poetry of all nations, ancient and modern. Their names are legend, peris, devs, jinns, sylvans, satyrs, fauns, elves, droves, trolls, etc. If some of you are really interested in this subject, I highly recommend you to read Isis Unveiled by Madame Elena Blavatsky. The Third Eye This is an interesting subject in the spiritual kingdom. The third eye is a chakra, which means energy center or will of energy. It is often linked to a symbol of spiritual awakening. The pineal gland is in most cases associated to the third eye, even though as a chakra the pituitary gland is related to it. The name of the first one is given because of its resemblance to a pine cone. The pineal gland is located in the center of the brain. If we draw a line that connects this gland to our face, it will be located in the middle of our eyebrows. It produces serotonin and melatonin, which play an important role on sleep, energy and mood. But one of the less known facts related to this gland is that it also produces DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is a drug used by shamans through the sacred plant ayahuasca in order to produce alternate state of consciousness which will lead them eventually to other realm of existence or consciousness. This, like any other drugs, should be taken seriously, but it has been used in order to treat people addicted to other negative drugs such as heroin. So the main fact is our body can produce this substance without being addicted to any kind of material drug. That explains why some people going through major spiritual awakening describes their symptoms with resemblance to the feelings and visions given by this drug. The third eye is mostly associated with clairvoyance, which can signify the sight of other planes of existence or past and future, but in a more detailed approach it means the ability to gain knowledge about a person, a place or an object using means other than the common five senses. I recommend you to read this book, Clairvoyant for Psychic Empowerment, which is the most complete I have ever read. Serious. The name of Harry's godfather is definitely not a coincidence. Sirius is one of the brightest stars in our sky and is part of the Canis Major constellation in the shape of a dog. For the Egyptians, its presence in the sky was divinely important because it was the pinpoint where the rising of the Nile started. The god Anubis and the goddess Isis were associated to this star because it is a symbol of support to the spiritual evolution of mankind. In Harry Potter, Sirius talks to Harry and he said that there's not just good on one side and bad on the other, but everyone is part of the two. 
which is the transcendence of duality which every initiated person must go through when they try to understand the universe. In the movie The Truman Show, a spotlight supposed to imitate the light from a star falls and on this projector is inscribed Sirius. It is the symbol of awakening. You see, in the movie, it pushes him to verify if his TV fictional world is real, just as the energy of the star Sirius pushes us to test the limit of our physical world by questioning the spiritual meaning of its existence and boundaries. For the African people Dogon of Mali, Sirius is the sun from which their gods came down to earth and gave them knowledge, including astronomy, which can't be explained by their technology given their knowledge about a second sun named Sirius B revolving around the first sun or Sirius A. Dragons Often described as violent, hostile to humans in the most common stories, their true nature is completely different. They, like elemental spirits or spirits of nature, are located in other planes of existence but in the higher state of a spiritual nature. Our physical world being the most dense one, spiritual realms by contrast are more etherical or subtle. The more a being evolves, the more it will have access to a higher plane of existence. Our consciousness being frozen in the physical realm, it is therefore impossible for the most of us to see them with our physical eyes, but we can develop our extrasensory perception, we can learn how to project our consciousness in other realms in order to see them. These beings are highly connected to magic. They can become the partner of a magician called the Rako, if of course the Rako is dignified of their partnership. We attract what we are, so if these wonderful creatures have appeared in your life, you are one way or the other linked to their presence. The Philosopher's Stone It is not a coincidence if Nicolas Flamel is mentioned along with Dumbledore to have discovered the secret of the Philosopher's Stone as the first one is a person who actually existed, renowned Parisian bourgeois alchemist. The alchemical symbol of the Philosopher's Stone is vitriol, which in Latin gives us Visita interiora terrae rectificando en vignes occultum lapidem, which translated approximately means Visit the inside of the earth and by correcting you will find the hidden stone. Just like any other sacred message, it is not to be taken literally. Lost will be the one looking inside of our planet earth because the land in question is our own bodies. The alchemist is the one who realizes that external phenomena in nature have a direct link with those who are produced in his own being. Vitriol is the symbol of sulfuric acid because the latter is used to dissolve metals except gold on which its effects are nullified. The symbols you see in the star here are planetary symbols respectively of Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury and the Moon. They each correspond to seven metals. Lead for Saturn, the gold for the Sun, copper for Venus, iron for Mars, etc. Some of you may have already heard the famous sentence of the alchemist, turn lead into gold. Well, sulfuric acid, active on most metals except gold, is in direct link with the immortality extolled by the Philosopher's Stone. You see, lead being the heaviest of the seven metals and the planet associated with dark Saturn, dark because of its distance to the sun, represents our dense and gross or material nature. Gold, on the opposite, being the symbol of the sun, represents our most ethereal or central, higher spiritual nature. The path to immortality, the way of the alchemist, is the transmutation of his own rough parts to become a pure ethereal being, a sun of light, a soul of light. The seven letters of vitriol correspond to the seven planets, also to the seven days of the week, Saturn for Saturday, Sunday, Sun, Monday, Moon, etc. but also to the seven colors of the rainbow, the seven chakras, the seven planes of consciousness, also recognized in Islam who talks about seven heavens. Every chakra, every color corresponds to a certain frequency, to a certain type of energy, a certain type of consciousness. So here we have a clue about the famous sentence of Nikola Tesla 
Secret of the Universe. Here's the end of my esoteric analysis of the Harry Potter saga. So, I hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, as you can see, we're gonna have a lot to talk about in my future videos, so make sure to hit the subscribe button. And I wish you a wonderful, full of magical and love and things like that kind of day. Alright.